Remarks by Bishop Lorenzo D. Young I have been called upon very unexpectedly to make a few remarks by President Hyde, but I can truly say my feelings and sentiments are much the same as his own, which he expressed when he first arose to address you at this conference. Although he occupies a vastly different position in the kingdom from myself, yet I feel that we are all good in our places, and can, if aided by the Holy Spirit, accomplish something for the salvation of men. I must acknowledge that in telling the sentiments of my mind, I have to say, this meeting and conference caps the climax with me. They are a little ahead of anything I ever witnessed in my life, and the sentiments in my mind were, while being a hearer on yesterday, as the dew, even upon Mount Sharon, the sweetness of honey and of honeycomb to the just. So are the words of God this day to the saints. I was more particularly interested in hearing from those two young men, brothers Joseph A. Young and William H. Kimball. True, they are younger both in years and experience than myself, but their feelings, particularly Brother Williams, were precisely like my own. He said that he felt like a child, and this is the way I feel this morning, and I feel that it is good to have an humble and childlike spirit within us at all times to possess a meek, quiet, humble, willing, and obedient spirit. There is something good and heavenly about such a spirit that I do admire. There is, in fact, a peculiar sweetness connected with the power of the gospel which surpasseth the understanding of man, and it is beyond the ability of finite man to express it, and it can only be manifested to us through the goodness of God and by the gift and power of the Holy Ghost. This has been very plainly shown to me, beloved saints, during our conference. It has been so vividly manifested to my understanding that I can say truly that I have never witnessed anything like it before in my life. I have sat and witnessed it with delight during this conference, and I only have to regret one thing, and that is that the capacity of my mind is so limited that it was beyond my ability to treasure up in my heart all the good things that have been said. The frailty of human nature is such that I know that it is impossible for me to reduce all those things to practice, as I know I should do, but I trust that you and I will be able to at least profit very much by the rich dainties that have been served up to us. I feel that it will be savory food for us all, and I go in for being with the rest of the saints, wherever they are, and I believe that we will have power to pursue the proper course the rest of our lives. Yes, we will have more power and ability than we have had heretofore, and we will have fortitude to stand the coming day of trial. I thought on Tuesday, while some of my brethren were receiving a little chastisement, that I could thank God that I was worthy to be noticed among them. I have many times thought that I was born in obscurity, and could scarcely be noticed at all. I am the youngest in the family, and although I have arrived at the years of manhood, yet I feel my brothers are far ahead of me, and more particularly that man whom God has placed at the head of his kingdom. I feel thankful that I am worthy to be associated with the saints of God, and that I am permitted to administer life and salvation to the people. This I consider an inestimable privilege and blessing and I truly felt grateful to my God when I found that I was worthy to be noticed with my brethren, for I realized that whom the Lord loveth he chasteneth. I will mention one thing that occurred in my younger days. I was a kind of an orphan boy in one sense, being separated from my father's family in the early part of my life, and my master taught me this, Lorenzo, look after your picayunes and your dollars will take care of themselves. Hence I have some of those ideas implanted in my nature, but I feel that the reproof and counsel of Brother Brigham are good, and I intend to profit by them. I had a good blessings from Brother Haywood yesterday, and it was a little different from any I ever received before. He said, I will bless you, and my blessing and desire is that you may live upon the earth many years, and become so lazy that you will live to a good old age, and not wear yourself out by hard labor in early life. While traveling through the settlements of the southern part of the territory last fall and during the winter, there was one feeling that I witnessed more than I ever did before among my brethren, and that was in relation to masters. It was said by a servant of God at a certain time, There are many masters but few fathers, and I am more than ever satisfied of the truth of this statement from what I saw last winter, and from what I heard. And when I see the willingness of the servants of God to bring their minds to submit to his will and chastisement, and see the readiness of the son and daughter to kiss the rod and, and to reverence the hand that gave it, I behold something that is unknown in the world. Let the brother and the father rise up and chastise one another in the sectarian world, and where is the son and daughter that will bear it? 
I know that it is not natural to our frail nature. At all events, I will say it is not natural to mine. But let a chastisement come from our Heavenly Father, and I can bear it with all good feelings, and so can my brethren. There has been a spirit of reformation among the people the past winter, and I feel ready and willing to receive reproof, correction, and instruction. I will here say, as I said to the people in Grantsville last winter, that I do not believe the Lord would have given us snow enough to water the earth if we had not repented. And I am so simple as to believe that the fine weather we enjoy at this conference is through the faithfulness and humility humility of the saints, and I rejoice in this faith, also in being a member of the family whom the Lord thinks enough of to chastise, and to know that he will not let them go down to perdition. If we had not been thought worthy of chastisement, but had been left to go down to destruction, we should not have enjoyed the blessings that we this day enjoy in these peaceful valleys. I will likewise say that my faith is implicit in another thing that we heard yesterday afternoon, and that is, that this people will never be removed out of these valleys if they continue faithful. I believe this as firmly as I do that my body will rise from the earth in the morning of the resurrection. Why should we fear or dread? The work of God is before us, which is the building of temples to the honor of the name of our God, preaching the gospel to the nations of the earth, and gathering and saving Israel. We are the people that God has chosen to go and gather the wheat into the garner, for he has said that he would sweep wickedness from the face of the earth, and that the people and nations that will not serve him shall be broken in pieces. It was said by Daniel that the kingdom of God was like a stone cut out of the mountains without hands. And I would here say to those whose faith was trembling, and who are full of doubt, that if they cannot believe in the fullness of the gospel, let them leave and go into the world, and see whether the kingdom will continue to progress and roll forth. Notwithstanding, this kingdom may be opposed, and many may turn aside and refuse the blessings that are offered. That stone will roll on, and whoever falls upon it shall be broken, but upon whomsoever it falls shall be ground to powder. The great hive of Deseret is gathering the sweetness of all that is worth collecting from among the nations of the earth. While I was sitting by those brethren who have been to the old country preaching the gospel of Christ, the plain simple truth that has got the power in it, I thought of the great work of separating the wheat from the tares, which has to be accomplished by that truth and priesthood that emanate from the fountain of all power and intelligence, even that which circumscribes all things and knows all things. I thank God today that we have the privilege of being in the great hive, and if the bees should swarm and occupy other hives, they will all be subject to the same kingdom. I ask the Lord to preserve us in the way of life, that we may secure eternal lives in his kingdom. If faithful, we shall be blessed in all things we put our hands unto, and be preserved while famine, pestilence, and the sword shall go through all nations of the wicked, and we shall live to participate in the glories and blessings of this latter-day kingdom, which may God grant, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask it. Amen.